Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard. This is a Gigabyte Z68X UD3HB3 featuring the 1155 socket and the Z68 chipset. So first off, let's take a look at the outside of the box and just a few of the icons and other items that we have on here. Uh, we have a Touch BIOS. It's a hybrid EFI technology, so you can use the mouse in the BIOS if you use the EFI version. Uh, also, thanks to the Z68 chipset and the video out ports on the back of the motherboard, you can actually use the iGPU in your Sandy Bridge CPU. Uh, you can use the Virtue technology that's made by Lucid Logix and uh, enable to use both GPU, the iGPU and a discrete GPU in tandem. Uh, we also have SLI capability for those of you going for a double card NVIDIA SLI solution. Uh, we also have Crossfire ability, although that icon is way down here separated from NVIDIA, just so they don't get in, in a fight. Uh, ATI, actually AMD, they should update this logo. AMD Crossfire capability as well, uh, if you're using an AMD double card solution. Uh, we also have high quality uh, caps, MOSFETs, and chokes for the components on the board. Uh, we also have the triple USB power for faster charging of your USB devices. USB 3.0, SATA Revision 3, 6 gig per second, uh, we also get up here a three-year warranty for USA and Canada for this board. And, of course, this is an ultra-durable uh, PCB using twice the copper in a normal PCB. That's uh, one of Gigabyte's touted features. Uh, also, thanks to the EFI technology in the BIOS, we can boot... Uh, actually, I should mention this is a dual BIOS, so you can uh, update one BIOS and save your other one, uh, which gives you a lot more confidence if you're updating your BIOS to have that backup. And also thanks to the EFI BIOS, you can boot from hard drives that are larger than 2.2 terabytes. Uh, finally, our sound, we have some high quality sound, Dolby Home Theater, 108 decibel signal to noise ratio, and lossless Blu-ray audio playback. Also, did I mention this is a Z68 chipset motherboard, so it supports Intel second gen core processors, 1155 socket. And also thanks to the Z68 chipset, you do have smart response technology capability that allows you to combine a low capacity SSD with a mechanical hard drive for much faster hard drive performance. So next up, let's take a look inside the box and see what is included with our Z68X. Uh, first off, we have a warning. This is a socket, 1155 socket motherboard, not 1156. So second gen Intel Core processors, Sandy Bridge code name, not the 1156 one. Make sure you get a compatible CPU for this motherboard. Uh, of course, we have the important motherboard manual. You want to keep that on hand while you're putting your computer together. And also we have a gigabyte driver and software CD. Also important to have on hand, it's usually best to download the latest drivers from the gigabyte website, but keep that around, especially in case your LAN chip is not automatically recognized by Windows after you install. Uh, we of course have a couple stickers here to put in your case, if you like stickers on your case, gigabyte and Dolby Home Theater. We have an input-output shield for the back of your case uh, with some clearly labeled definitions for all the input-outputs on the back. We have a multilingual installation guidebook if English is not your first language. And we, of course, have some serial ATA cables. Four of them total. They are black. They are SATA Revision 3 compatible. And two of them have L brackets on one end. Oh, there's also a SLI bridge. If you're going to run two-card SLI, you want to have this SLI bridge. If you're going to run Crossfire with AMD cards, uh, those usually come with the cards themselves. And then lastly, of course, we have the motherboard itself. Let me just get it out of this anesthetic bag and we'll go over it in detail. So here is a closer look at the motherboard itself. As you can see, it is a flat black PCB and our Z68 chipset heatsink is mounted with a couple spring-loaded Phillips head screws, so you can remove those if necessary. Moving around here to the front of the board, there's a look at it overall. We have uh, black slots on a black PCB and we have gray heat sinks uh, up here for our our VRM area, as well as our Z68 chipset. Uh, let's start and go over all of the little plugs and everything in detail, and we'll start down here in the bottom right. First off, we have our front panel connectors for your case, so you can plug in your power switch and all that. They're color-coded, and there's a little chart right underneath there so you can tell what's what. Uh, right above that, those two little pins are your clear CMOS uh, jumper, so you can uh, short those if you want to clear your CMOS. Uh, right above that is a four-pin PWM-controlled case fan header, so you can plug in a case fan. Next to that we have a USB 3.0 front panel header, so you can connect that to your front panel USB 3.0 on your case. Uh, right, Moving along to the left we can see a Firewire port 1394, covered with a little cap right now. 
Uh, next up we have one, two, three, four USB 2.0 front panel headers. Uh, so you can control two, four, six, eight total USB 2.0 ports with that. And then finally far on, on the far left we have a COM port for connecting serial devices. Uh, moving up, actually one more front panel item to mention. It is right here behind the uh, input outputs on the back and that is your HD audio connector. So you route that over to the HD audio on your uh, Cases front panel so you can enable your mic and headphone. Uh, let's talk about the PCI area right here. And um, while I'm in the area, actually, here is your CPU fan header, uh, which is down here. So usually, usually you find it up at the top, but on this particular motherboard, it's right there above the PCI slots. So bear that in mind. Uh, next up, PCI slots. PCI Express, we have one, two, three single speed PCI Express slots. Uh, in between and below those, we have two full length uh, PCI Express slots. Top one here is 16X, so you want to plug your video card in there. Bottom one here is 8X. These are SLI or Crossfire capable. Bear in mind if you're going to go with a you're going to if you're going to go with a Crossfire or SLI solution that both of these will default to 8X. Finally at the bottom, you have two legacy PCI slots for your old school PCI devices. Uh, moving along, right here we have our Z68 chipset heatsink. Uh, under that is our Z68 chipset. And the Z68 chipset controls some of these serial ATA ports. We have one that's facing up right there, serial ATA Revision 2. We have two more serial ATA Revision 2 ports right there, all three of these black ones. The fourth serial ATA Revision 2, controlled by the Z68 chipset, is actually on an eSATA port on the back of the board. I'll show you that with the IOs once we get around to that part. These two white ones here are serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports, also controlled by the Z68 chipset. And then these gray ones here, also serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. Those are controlled by an add-on Marvell 88SE9172 chip. Moving along up the side of the board, we have a TPM port right there, trusted platform module. Uh, we also have our 24-pin power connect, main motherboard power connector. We have another case fan header right there, that's a 3-pin. And then next to that, we have our DIMM slots for our DDR3 memory. You want to use 1.5 volt DDR3s, DDR3 DIMMs, I should say. Supports up to 32 gigs of DDR3 memory. That is if you can get your hands on some 8 gig DIMMs, which are kind of rare right now. But for now, go with 4 gig DIMMs. They'll still work just fine. This is dual channel, uh, so you will want to buy your DIMMs in sets of two. Also supports DDR3 overclock speeds of up to 2,133 megahertz, and make sure you're getting non-ECC memory modules for this motherboard. Next up we have our CPU socket right here. It is shiny chrome and it is an 1155 socket for your second generation Intel Core processors. Code name Sandy Bridge. Once again, your uh, CPU power header is right down there. So you want to route your CPU heatsink fan power plug right down over there. For your VRMs right here, you have a gray heat sink. And then uh, finally up on top here, we have one more system fan header. That's a three pin. We have our eight pin EPS supplemental CPU power connector right there. And uh, make sure you plug that in uh, if you want your system to boot, and especially if you're overclocking. Finally, we have inputs and outputs on the back of the motherboard. Uh, we have these red USB, USB 2.0 ports. Uh, these support three times the standard power of USB 2.0 ports, so that will charge your uh, external devices 40% uh, faster in general than uh, a standard USB port. Below that we have a purple and green PS2 connector for a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, all of these here are video outs, and I'm going to come back to those in just a second. We have a optical Toslink out port right there for your high definition audio. We have a couple more USB 2.0 ports. Again, those are the red ones. We have a FireWire port right there. And then this lower one here is an eSATA port. That is controlled by the Z68 chipset. It's the missing of uh, the sixth uh, serial ATA port uh, controlled by the Z68 chipset. It's revision to three gigabit per second, and you can connect an eSATA device to that. We have Gigabit LAN, a Realtek RTL 8111E chip controls that. We have a couple USB 3.0 ports down below that, the blue labeled ones for USB 3.0. And finally, we have our audio outs. This is a Realtek ALC 889 codec controlled. It is high definition audio. It supports up to 7.1 channel surround sound, also Dolby Home Theater and SPDIF out. Let's go back over to our video ports and get these caps off here for you. 
These video ports are for the iGPU in your Sandy Bridge processor. So once you get your Sandy Bridge processor installed right there, you can use these ports and you actually don't need a discrete graphics card, but you can also add on a discrete graphics card and you can use the Lucid Logic software to uh, switch back and forth between those. Uh, first off on top, we have a old school D-sub port uh, for those of you using some older monitors. Below that, we have a DVI-D port Supports a max resolution 1920 by 1200. Uh, next to that, we have an HDMI out, again, 1920 by 1200 max resolution. And finally, we have a display port out, and that can get you up to 2560 by 1600p resolution out of that display port output. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte Z68X UD3HB3 motherboard featuring the 1155 socket and the Z68 chipset. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and feel free to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and we will see you next time.